Thank you, Andy. Uh, my name is Stanley, and um, I was not trained as a medical person, actually. Uh, I was your very standard um, geek, a uh, term from the US. I studied um, electronics in UC Berkeley, and I wanted to build computers, chips, electronics, high-tech gadgets when I was um, uh, in college. And I did so for nearly 20 years. So I didn't enter this uh, medical world um, willingly. I was actually entered recently um, by accident. And let me describe that journey to you. When we first started NeuroSky back in uh, 2000, and actually should be 2005, um, I wanted to build one thing. Um, in 1978, I walked into a theater and I experienced a great movie called Star Wars. And as a kid, I wanted to go home and uh, harvest that force that I thought and I knew I had, but um, I, I had never succeeded. So I stopped trying to move a cereal box across the table in breakfast time, and uh, not even a just little cereal thing. Um, so I figured, well, if I can't do that, I'm going to do that with technology. So I studied electronics. Uh, in 2004, I sold my previous company. I thought, well, what can give me the force to satisfy my own um, childhood dreams? I found a system called EEG system uh, in the medical world. How many people know what that is, EEG? It measures your brain waves, right? A EKG measures your heart. So I study that system. I go, OK, if I can take, do the same thing but not in a clunky manner, then I can probably produce a force. So I shrunk that thing into a chip. And I went to George Lucas's team in San Francisco. And I did. I'm not, not kidding. I said, I can now give you the force. <laughs> you invented it, but well, you, you came up with the concept, but I invented it. Here it is. And I show him how to drive a ping pong ball up and down in three different levels without hands, just with pure thoughts, just concentration. And it was sold. It, let's do it together. And hence, in 2009, we produced this thing called the Star Wars Force Trainer. It hit the market. It sold like crazy. It went on all kinds of TV shows. People thought it was magical. Actually, it's based on a 70-year-old EEG technology, um, <laughs> but just in a chip. So it looked magical. Um, then we went on to, to sell. And this was all in the US. I'm sorry, we didn't have time to ship it to. UK or EU at the time. Uh, the manufacturing capacity wasn't that big. And we had two, George said, there are two million people still living in their mother's basement uh, by anything that he pushed. So we produced <laughs> two million units, units of that, and it was sold. So um, after that, I realized I have something interesting and powerful in my hands. It wasn't just a one-time deal, and it was fun. So we built this headset into a platform, into an SDK, so anybody could buy that at $99 um, and develop any application that they want with the, uh, using their EEG or their brainwaves. Um, fast forward about two years, and that's when I discovered, well, maybe this technology could go back into the medical world uh, for home use. I wasn't thinking about in the hospital people could use it. I got a call from this lady. And her name, I have to uh, disclose, not disclose her name because she didn't want to go public with it, so let's just call her Andy. And uh, her, not this Andy, but. <laughs> um, and her son was Mike. And she said, my, my son was born with a cerebral palsy condition, and he, had, he wasn't able to bat an eye if he wanted to um, since birth. But we th always thought he had a beautiful brain trapped inside that body. Can you help? Um, you're the guy who did the force. So I said, OK. Um, I sent in an engineering team. I took two of my engineers to their house, and we looked at Mike. Um, we put our headset on Mike. And uh, we did about 15 minutes of programming to get the, our system in, onto his PC. And we trained him to do one thing, uh, very simple. He, he was able to go yes or no. Just a simple uh, yes or no question. Um, then I wanted to test if it was accurate. 
So I asked Andy to ask Mike some simple questions. Um, Mike, do you like Coke or Pepsi? Coke, yes. Pepsi, no, or something like that. And Big Mac, no. You know, wrap, uh, what's from Birkin Whoppers, yes. Um, so she asked him a few, by the way, Mike was 21 years old at that time. So she's been caring for him for 21 years. So she kind of knew what he liked and what he didn't like, uh, he didn't like uh, for a while. So it was quite accurate. Nine out of 10 questions, he answered it to her expectation. Then we started, she started getting a little more personal. She, she said, well, Mike, do you know I'm your mother? Are you aware? And Mike goes, yes. And she asked him, proceeded to ask him a few more questions. Then I asked Mike, hey, Mike, do you love your mother? And he goes, yes, 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 yes. A big resounding yes. Um, never even once going into the no section. So he really, really loved it. Loved her, and that was the very first time Andy heard her son, who she cared for for 21 years, saying, I love you, Mom, in his own way. And that's what moved me into, maybe I should provide this technology and, and uh, be able to uh, apply it to more people in not exactly treating um, patients, but in more uh, medical care sector. And so we opened it up, and um, this year in Brazil, uh, there are 20,000 patients um, with ALS benefiting from this. Um, one of the ladies for the very first time, um, after suffering six years, uh, not able to move, was able to communicate with her um, husband uh, through computers, and we're very happy with that. So the moral of that whole story is, I thought I was creating something uh, interesting and fun, and I, I really want to, and we do have a very big business in the... Uh, entertainment area, by the way. So if you're all going to, some of you are going to the gadget show in December coming up in London, um, you'll be able to buy a pair of cat ears called Nekomimi that responds to your emotions. And it's very popular among 15 to 24 year old um, females. So <laughs> if you, and, and you, you can YouTube that, you'll see that everywhere. Um, if you have a daughter, they might know what it is. Um, so. We still built a lot of that, but um, we're also now converting a lot of medical systems into everyday electronics that you can use. We talk about big data. Um, our sensor has just been integrated into cell phones and PCs uh, for next year's version. I can't tell you which company yet. Um, and you'll be able to take your personal data um, just on the cell phone and record that and do whatever you want with it. Uh, we will supply, or our partners will supply a bunch of apps so you can record your, what we call the cardio zone or your um, uh, mental zone. And if one day you wake up and adventure outside of your normal zone, you better go see a doctor and find out what's going on. And that's uh, something that uh, you can use on a daily basis. Also, the sensor can allow you to interact with your phone in a very personal way or your gadgets. Um, the way you touch it, the way you interact with it is quite different from another person. So if my phone were to be stolen, like I, I, it was um, a few years ago, then whoever stole it would not be able to use my phone because the touch and the sense and the, the signals are all different uh, from different person. That's another safety feature for your phone. So um, one of the questions I'm supposed to answer before I step, do I have one more minute or no? Yeah. Uh, one more, okay. Before I step down, step off is in 10 years, what would the technology be like in the medical world? I believe um, in 10 years, you don't really need to go to your doctor. And in the US, we have to wait for hours sitting there. And it's very, very standard that doctors are late. You, know? um, you don't have to do that. You can go through a lot of daily uh, devices, cell phones, smartphones, um, computers, to do a lot of the basic um, information uh, collection. So you can send that to your doctor and have them uh, tell you what you need to do. Um, and we, I, I believe we call that telemedicine or a mobile health uh, initiative in the US. I don't know why you call that here. But I believe in 10 years time that will be a standard norm way of interfacing with your doctors. Thank you. <laughs>